Like the Amazon and Congo basins, the coral triangle straddles the tropics, home to the greatest diversity of species on Earth. It is vast in scale and contains more than 30% of all coral reefs on Earth and about 75% of all coral species. The reefs of the Coral Triangle have survived and thrived over millions of years. They are the fundamental bedrock of global coral diversity and the irreplaceable goods and services they provide. They are a global treasure and powerful sources of economic growth and social well-being. But they are also vulnerable not least to sea temperature rise. The last Great El Nino in 1997 caused sea temperature rises unprecedented in modern times, leading to coral bleaching and mortality in places exceeding 90% of all reefs right across the globe, in a shocking preview of what the effects of climate change will be. In the following two years, Scientists around the world asked and tried to answer the question, what are we going to do about all this dead coral? Many concluded that nothing could be done, that climate change would destroy reefs and the lives and livelihoods of millions of coastal dwelling people. Rod Sam, director of the Conservancy's Asia Pacific Marine Program, was one of those scientists asking the question. After snorkeling over acres of dead coral, this time in Palau, Rod was swept by a strong current between two barrier reefs, over some fringing reefs, and then over shallow reefs in the mouth of an estuary. Rod noticed that, rather than all the dead coral on the barrier reef, he was suddenly seeing quite a bit of a live coral in the fringing reefs, and a great deal of a live coral in the estuary covered in dirt with no color, but alive. It was then that he realized that scientists were asking the wrong question. The real question was, why did coral in one place survive while the same types of coral nearby bleached and died? He set about answering that question and in so doing made one of the most important breakthroughs in coastal marine conservation thinking in the last 35 years. Through Rod's extraordinary insight, we are now better able to predetermine which coral colonies are likely to be more resilient and resistant to the effects of sea temperature rise, to the effects of climate change. Those resilient reefs have to get priority protection in areas designed to survive, manage to last, and connected like strings of pearls along ocean currents to transport larvae that will re-establish life in dead areas over the millennia, from the great source reefs in the Coral Triangle, along staging reefs, to sink reefs across the Pacific. Equipped with this knowledge, the Conservancy is working across millions of square miles of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans to apply this science in practice. Partners are putting the same principles to work all around the tropics. We are poised to achieve dramatically increased impact at scale. With adequate resources and working together with partners, we believe we can conserve 10% of the most diverse nearshore and shelf of the resources in the Coral Triangle in 10 years. Much remains to be done. But with your support, we can make a massive, tangible and lasting contribution to conserving the greatest coral reef system on Earth and all the irreplaceable goods and services it provides to people.